In September 2019, Lily Singh became the latest steward of the 1.30 a.m. time slot on NBC. Your girl is getting her own NBC late night show. Lily Singh was a very successful YouTube personality, so it made sense for an old corporation like NBC to tap into her young demographic and existing fan base. Although the argument has been made why the transition from social media to traditional television might have a steeper learning curve than the network had hoped, it doesn't change the fact that following Carson Daly's 17-year run as host of Last Call, tonight marks the final episode of my late night show Last Call, which started back here on NBC in 2002, if you can imagine. I was very interested to see what new energy Ms. Singh would bring to NBC's late night schedule. One of her big selling points seemed to be the diversity she represented. Look, I get it, okay? I'm not your traditional talk show host. I mean, the media has mentioned I'm a bisexual woman of color so much that I feel like I should just change my name. While Lily Singh might be the first host to check all three of these boxes at the same time, she's not the first woman to host a show on NBC in this time slot, nor is she the first woman of color to do so. I immediately thought of Cynthia Garrett, who hosted later back in 2000, but she only hosted for a year, and female hosts in this time slot have been something of a rarity, and so I felt it was time to throw a spotlight on the unsung women of 1.30 a.m. In 1972, NBC debuted the first program to air after 1 a.m. After The Tonight Show on Friday nights, television went to black. There was nothing on. Right now there's movies all night. And you see all kinds of reruns on, but there was nothing. The Midnight Special was a weekly showcase for live musical performances and stand-up comedy. Well, folks, welcome to the... Oh. <laughs> oh, no! Ladies and gentlemen, we've had an accident here in professional show business. Now, of course, I am a professional. I can handle something like this. And it's part of my job, so don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> okay, let's get going now. Um... Wolfman Jack acted as the announcer who introduced the show. The Midnight Special's Late Late Concert is coming up. If I'm lying, I'm dying. And each episode featured a guest host for the week. Thank you and welcome to the Midnight Special. And a special hello to all the regulars who have been waiting to be entertained this early hour in the morning. Eventually, they decided to switch from a guest host to a permanent host. Helen Reddy had hosted the first regular episode of the Midnight Special after the pilot. I'm pretty excited to be hosting this show because it's the first in a weekly series of a very exciting new concept in late, late night television. She had emceed the first and second anniversary shows, and in July of 1975, she became the permanent host. Ben Sugarman presents the Midnight Special. Starring Helen Reddy. Producer Bert Sugarman said she was my first and only choice. A singer from Australia, Helen Reddy was probably most famous for her hit song, I Am Woman. Oh, yes, I'm wise, but it's ways to pull the pain. Oh, yes, I'll pay the price, but look how much I gained. If I had to, I can do anything. I am strong. She hosted almost every week through March of 1976 before the show reverted to guest hosts. I don't have to tell you who this is. I think you know. Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds. Ike and Tina Turner! One of the class groups of all time. Fleetwood Mac! And when the show ran in her native Australia, it was known as Helen Reddy's Midnight Special. I couldn't find any information on why she stepped down as regular host. Perhaps it was because she was so busy with other projects, like appearing in Disney's Pete's Dragon that year. You'll abuse him. Him. You We'd like to see you try it. But she remained friendly with the show and continued to host from time to time. Still, for nine marvelous months, Helen Reddy served as the first female host for NBC at 1.30 a.m. With the midnight special anchoring Friday nights, NBC wanted another show to follow The Tonight Show the rest of the week. Good morning, everyone. It's now tomorrow here on NBC. Tomorrow starred Tom Snyder, a Los Angeles news anchor trying his luck as a talk show host. Every host needs someone to fill in for them from time to time, but no one filled in more often than Kelly Lang. I'm talking to the Ramones right now. Joey, Johnny, Judy, and Marky. Lang was not just Snyder's fellow news anchor. I was the first woman anchor on any of the owned NBC stations How around the country. Difficult. She started in radio in Los Angeles before moving to television news. <laughs> I entered a contest for um, a ladybird. 
and it was for to find a woman and would fly in a helicopter and do traffic reports on the freeways. And they didn't have any women doing that ever before either. She got along well with Snyder and was his go-to replacement on Tomorrow. I'm Kelly Lang. Back to you, Tom. Okay, thanks, Kelly. You know, for a second there, when uh, when Kel said uh, said uh, to Rick Nelson, "Do you feel sexy?" I thought we'd have a little television first out there in Hollywood, but these things did not happen, fortunately. One thing you can say about Kelly Lang on the Tomorrow program that you can't say about anyone else is that she's the only other host besides Tom Snyder to appear on any official releases of the Tomorrow Show, appearing, for example, on the Punk and New Wave DVD. Kelly Lang may not have been a permanent host on Tomorrow, but between 1974 and 1981, she appeared at least a few times a year, making her run longer than any other Tomorrow host besides Tom. one of the world's most widely read Hollywood gossip columnists. That's right. As a teenager, Rona Barrett organized fan clubs for celebrities, and as an adult, she became a celebrity gossip columnist. Like Tom Snyder and Kelly Lang, she found a job in L.A. television. Joining Good Morning America on ABC gave her national exposure. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. Can you for, you. Answer for her, will you please, dear? All right. Uh, now she's all set. Oh, listen. Sure. I have to tell you something. I want to thank you all for having me here. <laughs> Why? Well, are you I going? I've gotten such news for my magazine. <laughs> <laughs> she then jumped networks to the Today Show on NBC. Hello, I'm Rona Barrett, and I'll be joining Tom Brokaw and Jane Pauley with my special news reports on the entertainment industry. Rona on Today begins Tuesday on NBC. Her jump coincided with NBC's shakeup of Tomorrow with Tom Snyder. When Johnny Carson abbreviated The Tonight Show by half an hour, Tomorrow picked up the slack. NBC decided to bless Tom Snyder with a co-host in Rona Barrett. And now here is Rona to report on what's happening in Hollywood tonight. Thank you, Tom. Tonight here in Hollywood, we'll take a look at some big and not so big surprises in this year's Golden Globe Awards nominations. Eventually dubbing the revamped show Tomorrow Coast to Coast and adding Rona's name to the title. Good evening again, everyone. Last week, author Sidney Sheldon was my guest, and he launched an extensive attack on the motives and modus operandi of the Reverend Jerry Falwell and his increasingly controversial religious lobby called the Moral Majority. The new premise had Tom talking to celebrities from his studio in New York, while Rona gabbed with folks from Hollywood. We talk about it with lots of people, and much has been written, and yet now and then there isn't or there doesn't seem to be enough information to substantiate that there was or there wasn't a casting couch during the so-called heyday <laughs> of Hollywood. Rona, if there was, honest to God, I never saw it. But I think that uh, maybe because I wasn't as attractive as I should have been for the men in the front office, Maybe they like the money coming into the box office better than they like me on the casting couch. Rona and Tom famously clashed, and her run was short-lived from October 1980 to June 81. It, it turned into something that was really not nice, not good, and um, I, I just decided I had to end, end this. But Rona wasn't the only new blood joining Snyder in Late Night. Nancy Friday joined the power trio about a month earlier than Rona, due to availability. Friday had first come to national attention as the author of My Secret Garden, a book about women's sexuality. She had appeared on Tomorrow, among other talk shows, to discuss it. This lady was first on this program, I think, in 1974, when she published or authored a book called My Secret Garden, which was a collection of women's sexual fantasies. Since then, uh, she and I have discussed monosexuality, bisexuality, and trisexuality, which means those people who, who would try anything. <laughs> would you please welcome a good friend and a good lady, one of the good people. Here is Nancy Friday. Nancy, you're on. Hey, it actually wasn't 74. I was just thinking in the green room that I, my whole writing career began simultaneously with the beginning of the show, 73. Was you the were here the first time I year. Did, first time I did uh, the Tomorrow Show was for My Secret Garden. Was I scared? Yeah, us too, with some of the stuff you were talking about at the time. <laughs> I must say, thinking back to 1973, though, your crew was so funny. I remember when they called me to ask me to come out to do the show, and uh, uh, they said, oh, I can't, we can't wait to see Tom on screen with a woman who's going to talk about sex. <laughs> and I must say, you looked at me rather askance. Not the cool, calm, collected man you are now, who doesn't wince when I mention masturbation and oh, vagina man. and the rest of that. So here we go. God. You know something, I was uncomfortable with it then, and I'm uncomfortable with it now. As part of the 1980 shakeup of The Tomorrow Show, Friday was added to the hosting pool on a regular basis as a human relations commentator. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find any footage of Friday on Tomorrow as anything other than a guest. I don't know if she was any more than a segment host, but I have found some articles referring to her as co-host. Either way, she held a place in the annals of 1.30 a.m. I have finally reached not only the age where I feel my own personal age, where I feel confident taking and just terrific taking the initiative, but it's the time we live in, too. Women should, women can, and it's wonderful. Here, here for taking the initiative, girls. <laughs> When the 90-minute Tomorrow Show ended to make way for the 60-minute Late Night with David Letterman, NBC was left with a vacant 1.30 time slot. The first show to succeed tomorrow at 1.30 was NBC News Overnight, a reworking of an earlier news magazine called Weekend. His name is Lloyd Dobbins. Her name is Linda Ellerby. And we're in Palm Springs, California, with former President Gerald Ford. Weekend was rebooted as NBC News Overnight, which ran five nights a week. Tonight, to inaugurate our program, we bring you an eclipse of the moon. And what other program ever did that for you? And if you want more, there is more. More news, sports, more, more news. The not ready for prime time news. Plus dragon boats, crocodiles, spaceships, and one billion Chinese, more or less. Welcome to Overnight. At that time, there really was nothing on. Most of the of three networks, they went to black for the middle of the night, you know. Their fear was that if people wanted news 24 hours a day, by golly, the broadcast networks had better figure out a way to give it to them before it lost its entire audience to CNN. Some people think that in journalism, good news is no news. Not true. News is news without the judgment call. And so it is with pleasure we begin tonight's broadcast with good news. It was really the inmates got to run the asylum. It really was. We got to put on the show that we'd always wanted to, the news show that those of us who reported the news always had wanted to put on. For the main reason being that all our employers were old and asleep at that time of night. And in Morristown, New Jersey, a salesman who pleaded guilty to molesting three young girls has been sentenced. The judge has ordered him to spend weekends in jail and to attend an off-Broadway play that the judge said would show him the terrifying experience it would be if he had to go to jail. The children who were molested do not, at least, have to go to the play. We got to make the stories run longer. We would tell the NBC reporters, we would say, look, you know, we know that Nightly News cut your story to a minute 30 because they cut everybody's story down to a minute 30. And we know that the Today Show only wanted two minutes, but they only want the lighthearted part of your story. We'll take what you think the story should have been on the air. But we can't pay you the extra to stay and cut it. You have to want to do it. Well, they all wanted to do it because they all wanted to prove to Today Show and Nightly how it should have been done. The leadership of any country, any country, wants to be seen as it wants to be seen. That is not a sin, but it's something to know and to remember. And it's something that makes covering the White House a curious job. That is why presidents like what is called a photo opportunity, which is nothing more than a lack of opportunity to do anything other than take a photograph. No questions, no answers. What follows is from NBC White House correspondent Andrea Mitchell. She doesn't hate Mr. Reagan. She isn't out to get him. She is professionally out to get the story. It's her job. At the White House, any White House, that's not very easy to do especially when he has more experience with cameras than you do. All politicians do silly things like this, but no one has done it as naturally as Ronald Reagan. Or as often. He's the public relations president, the master of the photo opportunity. Driving a tractor in Peoria beats trying to explain unemployment. We didn't have money to send crews out to cover, so we would cover, say for example, uh, the Senate hearings on the new Secretary of State by, because we got a lot of foreign coverage for free, by showing how the four major NATO allies covered the United States hearings for the new Secretary of State, which was a great idea because it gave you two streams of information. Not only what was going on in the U.S. Senate, but what the major U.S. allies thought of what was going on in the U.S. Senate. The Environmental Protection Agency isn't what it used to be. Its powers and its programs have been abbreviated in recent years, and the agency, according to the agency, lacks money. Therefore, it struck most people a little bit odd to learn today that the EPA is spending $221 a day to teach its executives how to handle the media. Because, says the agency, it needs the publicity. 
it's worked so far. Overnight was just a chance for everybody to do their best without the politics that goes on in the average newsroom. But her finest moment. I think it would have to be standing on the stage at Columbia University at the DuPont Awards, which are the Pulitzer Prizes of television, uh, with a group of people from a little bitty, no account, no frills, no budget show, and having them read out the words. And to NBC News overnight, in the opinion of the judges, probably the most intelligent and best written newscast ever. That wasn't a bad moment as moments go. We had such press, you wouldn't believe. I mean, if as many people had seen the show as wrote about it, I think we'd still be on the air. But the, a part of our problem was they had no way then to rate anything after 11.30 at night. Uh, so there was no way to rate college dorms, hotels, hospitals, any place where, where ga people uh, pe might gather. And, and the home ratings all shut off at 11.30 because TV did the, the needles and boxes. They just all went silent. When it was canceled, it, it got, things got even stranger. People began to send letters like crazy to NBC. They sent money, dollar bills, checks. There was a Save Overnight campaign. It was really crazy, uh, but it, you know, corporations never blush. The show went off the air anyway. I think it's not as important that NBC took this program off the air as it is that NBC put this program on the air. That was something. We go smiling. The final quote is from Mark Twain, discussing the young missionary who went out among the cannibals. Said Twain, they listened with the greatest of interest to everything he had to say, and then they ate him. This is the 367th edition of Overnight. There are no more. And so it goes. The Midnight Special sang its last hurrah in May of 1981, replaced by a Canadian sketch comedy series, SCTV. You would see them on NBC on Friday nights on a show called SCTV Network 90. Uh, joining us are three veteran members of the group, Joe Flaherty, Catherine O'Hara, and Eugene Levy. You've done syndication for some years, and now you're on the television network. What's the difference in doing that 90-minute program for us as compared to the one that you do or did for syndication? It's longer. SCTV only ran for two seasons before it was booted in favor of Friday Night Videos. NBC's alternative to MTV for the cable impaired. FNV started to employ guest hosts for the week in 1985. This is Friday Night Videos. Uh-huh. We're here tonight. We're going to show you some of our favorite uh, tunes and tunettes and performers and show you what's hot this week. Wow. Whitney Houston and me co-hosting Friday Night Videos. Here we go. Tonight on Friday Night Videos, your host is mean Gene Okerlund with his special guests, Randy the Macho Man Savage and the lovely Elizabeth. It's one of the favorite groups of Jake the Snake Roberts and Damian White Snake. Is this love? Is, it, is this love, Macho Man? Between the lines, you've been caught. Yeah. Is it love? No, no, no. This is war, baby. White snake. Let it happen. Yeah. I think I got caught between a rock and a hard place. That's too bad, man. In 1991, they changed to permanent yet short-lived hosts. Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, Frankie Crocker, Daryl M. Bell, and Branford Marsalis. In 1994, the show underwent a format change, adding stand-up comedy, celebrity interviews, comedy sketches, a new name, Friday Night, and new hosts, Rita Sever and Henry Cho. From what I can tell, Henry Cho was the main host. Stay tuned, Friday Night, we'll be back with the Friday Night Jukebox Portrait. Bruce Springsteen, readers look at the movies and a viewer's poll right after this. And Rita Sever was there to review movies. Well, there are five big movies opening this Memorial Day weekend to challenge the current hit. First is Brave Heart, Mel Gibson's 13th century three-hour fight against the cruel English rulers. But they would come together for occasional segments and skits. I'll name a big summer movie and you give its name a sequel. Sequel to French Kiss. Ding! Yes. What is uh, Copperfield? Very good, Henry. Sassy. Okay. Uh, sequel to Forget Paris. Uh Yes. And to hell with the rest of France. Snooty frogs hot. Cho vamoosed after two years, leaving Rita as the sole host. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Friday Night. It's time for this week's voting, starting with your favorite music video from three top ten songs. A couple of weeks ago, we showed you what it was like to take off in a space shuttle. Well, tonight, Commander Weatherby takes us for a tour of the inside to see how the astronauts live in space. Well, Jim, thanks for having me back. Welcome back. Hi. Okay, Leslie, you're up. Good luck. 
Hi, I'm Rita Sever. Here's my resume. There's that bitch that hosts the Friday night show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, what makes her qualified to judge all those movies and TV shows? Have you ever seen her try to dance in those music video parodies? <laughs> oh, she's really good. Talk about lack of coordination. You know, I don't even think I'm in the same league. I should just pick up my picture and get out of here. Oh, don't say that. I mean, no, I'm serious. Especially now that I assume because you guys are here, there's nudity involved. <laughs> Rita Sever hosted Solo from 1996 to 2000. All right, well, that's going to do it for our show tonight. Thanks a lot for watching. Until the show was rebranded once again, this time as Late Friday, a stand-up comedy showcase hosted by Joe Rogan, among others, which ran for another two years before being replaced by Last Call with Carson Daly. Although that wasn't the last we saw of Rita Sever. The sun set for NBC overnight in 1983. It wasn't until five years later that it dawned on NBC to create Later with Bob Costas, a new talk show in the 130 space. Costas was a sports broadcaster for many years with NBC, but he decided to try his hand at a general talk show. Costas followed the Tom Snyder format of one guest, no audience, and no comedy. After five and a half years, Costas withdrew from the show to focus solely on sports. He was succeeded by Greg Kinnear, the original host of Talk Soup, who turned later into a more traditional late night show with a monologue, comedy bits, and then one guest. Eventually, Kinnear left to pursue movie roles, vacating the show. As unlikely as it seems, later continued for the next four years, 1996 to 2000, without a regular host. I like to call this period celebrity jury duty, where every week you had a new host for four nights provided they could book their own guests. One of the more frequent hosts was Friday Night's Rita Sever, probably the default when they couldn't find anyone else. In December 1999, Cynthia Garrett had her turn in the seat and pulled some of Later's best ratings, so starting January 2000, she was named as the new permanent host. My next guest this evening has been a familiar face on VH1 for the last three years. Welcome back to VH1's History of Music video from A to Z. I'm Cynthia Garrett. Here's how Madonna introduced herself to the world in her first video from 1982. She was really burning up, wasn't she? And recently she became the host of Later, which follows this show every Monday through Thursday. Please welcome Cynthia Garrett. everyone, welcome to Later. I'm Cynthia Garrett, your host. Garrett seemed to book a lot of musical acts, I assume due to her background in music. I get to come across a lot of great music artists. Some people describe them as Britney Spears meets Slayer. Their 1995 CD, Penthouse, was actually called one of the best albums of the decade by Rolling Stone magazine. Their hit videos, Rio, Hungry Like the Wolf, and Save a Prayer, became the blueprints for what music video junkies take for granted today. In fact, her first guest was her stepbrother, Lenny Kravitz. First of all, congratulations are in order. This is nice. You got the, the later show. Thank yeah. you. Are you Thank having you. a good time doing it so far? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I love I love talking to people and mm -hmm. just interacting with different kinds of people. So the great thing about the show is it's pretty eclectic. Right. Like we may go from a writer director to a the sitcom star. Right. You know, and there's kind of room to just sit and talk to different kinds of people. So that's kind of cool. And we're gonna try some new stuff. Right. With the show. I'm back with Marisol Nichols and we're gonna take a shot at the later list. First question. Yeah. One thing that makes it difficult to be in a relationship with you. What do your school teachers think that you'd be when you grow up? How would you define your sexuality? What turns you on about a man? If you could ask the president one question, what would you ask him? When is the gas prices going to go down? <laughs> <laughs> what about the 80s don't you miss? Well, don't you miss? Yes, what don't you miss? Those what sexually transmitted miss? diseases that we were all so afraid of. <laughs> That was the worst thing about the 80s. It was like, oh my God, what do I have now? See, I thought it was just, I, I, <laughs> That's one thing nobody ever talks about in the 80s. You have a core group of fans <laughs> that's really loyal, but you're not necessarily a household name. We do very well on college radio. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And ham radio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Later, of course, is on After Late Night every Monday through Thursday. And, uh, and you've been giving us, uh, like, great promos and stuff. Thank you. Well, we do what we can. We love you. We're I've been watching you since you first went on the air. Really? Yep. All right. I have. That's seven years now. Uh, it's a long time. You no. really started at the beginning, and did you watch every night? I watched every night. Every night in the for the first two years, and then it would you know taper off a bit so I could catch a couple of this nights. This interview is over. Uh... <laughs> Garrett's run ended after one year in January 2001, and was replaced with Later Presents SCTV, presumably a cost-friendly rerun package. In January 2002, Last Call with Carson Daly replaced SCTV, and in May 2002, it replaced Late Friday. For the first time since the Midnight Special and Tomorrow Show started in 1973, all five nights of 1.30 programming were united under one host. Did we just lose?
17 years later, the torch was passed to Lily Singh. Hey, sorry I'm late. Oh. Lily, welcome. Hey, so oh. excited to talk hey, about you know. your new show. Me too. A huge shout out to all the women who have been before me and are currently in the space because I couldn't have done it without them paving the path. I had hoped that among all the new business she was to conduct, Lily would welcome back the former women of 130 as guests to find out what they'd been doing since leaving the time slot. Sadly, it was not to be, and A Little Late was canceled at the end of the second season. We should note that in 2021, Peacock's Amber Ruffin Show, a streaming talk show in the late night format, did broadcast on NBC at 1.30 a couple times as a replacement for reruns of Lily Singh's show, technically adding her to the late night family. Before we go, let's see what our late night friends have been doing since they parted company with NBC. Cynthia Garrett got more TV gigs like hosting the TV Guide channel, judging Scandinavia's next top model, and joining the panel of Life and Style. But her biggest change came when she became a pastor and started Cynthia Garrett Ministries. She now hosts a talk show of a different kind, what she calls a walk show, speaking about faith. The sessions are these incredible uh, real life, real conversations about everything that Nobody really wants to talk about what everybody needs to talk about in order for all of us to become better Christians in the world today. Rita Sever is the host that I found the least amount of information on. She has appeared in a few movie roles since leaving Late Night under her married name, Rita Considine. It's late. Good night, everybody. Linda Ellerby landed other network news jobs after overnight, but she's probably best known to today's audience as the host of Nick News on Nickelodeon, a job she held for 23 years. The simple fact of what happened is scary. So we urge you to invite a parent or another adult you trust to watch with you, and then you can talk about what you saw and why September 11th, 2001 is an important date in American history, your history. Nancy Friday continued writing books about sexuality and appeared as a guest on many TV talk shows speaking on the subject. There are bad men, but let us quickly say there are bad women. And sexual harassment yes. has been set up against men and for women, and that's wrong. Big bad women can harass men just as badly as the opposite. Sadly, she passed away in 2017. Rona Barrett left Hollywood in the early 90s and created the Rona Barrett Foundation. The Rona Barrett Foundation is dedicated to finding a solution to the crisis facing seniors in regards to affordable housing and care. Kelly Lang reported the news for many years, but also started a second career writing mystery novels. I do write. I'm a writer. Oh, oh. Maxie Poole is my sleuth in my books. She's a television news anchor person right. who gets involved with the story. I write mysteries, a lot of dead people. Uh, I don't know why I have the need <laughs> to kill people, but if you ever want to kill people, do it in print. In a book. In, in a, a book. book. Because if you do it in real life, you know they catch you and they put you Correct. away. You can't have your hair colored, nothing. Helen Reddy continued recording music through the 90s and embraced her status as an icon of the feminist movement. I am a woman, hear me roar, in numbers too big to ignore. And I know too much to go back and pretend. In 2019, she was the subject of the biopic, I Am Woman. Ladies and gentlemen, some call it retirement, others call it a permanent vacation. I call it unemployment. And so it goes. And so do I. Thank you. That was very nice. Thanks, Helen. Nice job. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Helen Reddy. That's happened again. We're going to have to put somebody on the door. All right, Bob? <laughs>